Welcome back. All right, so what we're going to focus on now is getting the tank to move around the scene. Okay, so let's jump over into Unity and take a look at how we're going to get this going. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on getting the tank to move back and forth and to rotate based off of user input. All right, we're going to use the rigid body for that. So um, before we go any further with that, let's uh, put a box collider on this. Um, now, what I like to do is I like to organize my controllers a little bit. All right, so I'm going to create a new empty game object here, and I'm going to call this my graphics group. Okay, and I'm just going to throw all of the geometry into that graphics group. And then I'm going to create another group called the collision group. Okay, and I'm going to then add another empty game object, and we'll just call this um, main collision. All right, because at some point this will have more complex collision or colliders set up for it. All right, but for now what I'm going to do is just set up just a box collider for this. All right, and I'm going to um, increase the Z value here just by selecting the little Z icon or text there. And then you just click and hold and drag. Okay, and I'm going to increase the X as well just till we get it uh, roughly the size of the the tank there and then just increase that Y value and then I'm going to edit the collider so what we can do is we can interactively edit this particular collider here and to do that I'm just gonna hit this edit collider button and move this up so I'm gonna go back into my orthographic view go into the side view here and just drag that until we get basically down to the bottom really what I'm looking for is just to kind of encompass the whole model at least at this early stage here I'll go to the top view and that's pretty good actually I kind of nailed it all right so let's go and uh, turn the gravity back on all right because I want it to sit on the ground all right so let's go back and let's focus on the movement of the tank so I'm gonna jump here into Visual Studio and the first thing that I want to do is I want to change over to using the fixed update all right so this is Whenever you're dealing with rigid body, you need to use the fixed update. And if we come over here to the Unity documentation, you can see that fixed update should be used instead of update when dealing with the rigid body. And this is only because the update is called every frame and the fixed update is called at a different rate. All right. And the physics need that fixed rate to work properly. Otherwise, the physics are just going to go crazy. OK, and you just won't have a lot of control over it. So we use the fixed update. So within this fixed update, what I want to do is I want to say, I want to make sure first that I have the rigid body and the input. So I'm going to say if RB and input, meaning if we have both of those components, if both of these variables have a reference to in them, all right, they're not null, meaning they're not empty, okay, then we can run a bunch of code. And again, this is why I like to do my custom method. So I'm going to add the region custom methods all right and end region like so and i'm going to do another protected virtual void and we're going to call this handle movement all right and then i'm just going to call that from here so if we have both those components i'm going to run this handle movement method and this just allows me to create different movement types so now instead of having to write all this code over again I can just inherit from the IP tank controller class and literally just update this one method or just overwrite it and add on whatever our code I want to do or completely rewrite just that method and everything will still work appropriately. Okay, so it's just a you know, more smarter way to work. Really, at the end of the day, it's more efficient. It allows you to move faster. Um, anyways, so what I want to do now is I want to create a variable. That's a vector three, okay? And this variable is going to be called the wanted position. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to store the position that the tank should be going towards. Okay. So um, let me just put a semicolon there and explain this a little bit more. So every frame or every fixed update, I want to tell the rigid body I should take my current position that I'm at. Okay. So I'm at this current position, X, Y, and Z right here. And I want to add on another vector. All right, and that vector will be this forward direction plus a certain amount of speed. Okay, 
And so what that'll do is it'll take the current position and then add it on. All right. And then the next fixed update, it'll take its current position again and then add it on. All right. And it'll just keep doing that as long as the game is running or the tank explodes or, you know, something happens. Okay. So let's get that set up and, and take a look. We'll do a really basic example first. Um, in order to do that, we need to put in some variables though. So I need to say public uh, float, we'll call this the tank speed. So this is how fast we want the tank to move. I'm just gonna initialize to something like 15, okay? All right, uh, and while we're at it, why, why don't we just set up the rotation speed? So we'll call this tank rotation speed. We'll initialize that to something like 20, okay? Cool. And I also like to set up my headers. It's kind of a nitpicky thing that I always do. And it, honestly, I just can't get past not putting it in. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the tank, or I'm just going to call this the movement uh, properties. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we have those two float variables. All right, we've initialized them to some starting value. I'm going to come down here and we're just going to set up a really rough example of this. What I want to do is I want to say I want to take the current transform.position plus the transform.forward. Okay, so that transform.forward is that little blue arrow right there. It's the best way that I can explain it. It's the forward direction that the object is looking and that is always that z direction here in Unity specifically. Okay. So the best way to visualize it is it's that blue arrow, okay? That's that transformed out forward. That's a vector, all right? It's always normalized, meaning it's always a magnitude of one, okay? So it's a length of one, all righty? And I'm going to multiply that by our tank speed, okay? And then what we need to do to make sure that this runs consistently on different CPUs, all right, and different computers, we need to use the time dot delta time. And I usually like to put these into the parentheses so this runs first, all right? Order of operations, this will run first and then we'll add it on to our current transformed opposition. Cool. All right, so let me know if any of that, there was a lot of information in there, so let me know if any of that doesn't make any sense. But um, let's then apply it to the rigid body. So we're gonna say RB, that's our rigid body, all right? Remember, that's where we're storing our rigid body, okay? We're gonna say RB.move, position. So instead of adding a force, okay, I'm going to move the position, all right? You might have seen a lot of um, tutorials out there where they're just, they're moving the rigid body by adding a force. Now, that is great when you're dealing with something like an airplane or a helicopter, um, which, you know, I've been creating a couple courses about all that stuff. Or you are, you know, adding a force to like a ball, or maybe you're making a rocket, right? That's where you would go and add a force. Now you can do that with a tank, um, but this is a basic example of how we can use this move position function. All right. So if you look at the method here in the arguments, it's looking for a position. Well, we just created a new position. This is a position we want the tank to move towards. All right. So let's just feed it that position. Okay. Because we're constantly adding on the current position with the transform not forward times the tank speed. All right. This is constantly being updated. All right, so every fixed update, this is constantly being updated. Okay, so let me actually just put a little comment here. We'll call this move tank forward, like so. So let's check this out now. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to hit play. And there we go. So now the tank is moving forward. Excellent. So now we need to actually allow the user to control that because we don't want our tank just to move off into the distance. All right. Uh, we, we actually want some control. And remember, in our tank input, we have this property right here, this forward input right here, okay, where we could get the current forward input. So all we need to do now is just add another section here, just multiply it by input dot forward input. All right. And we can make sh we are sure that this will run because we've already checked to see if we have the input. If we don't have input, then this won't run. If we don't have the rigid body, this won't run. We have to have both these components for this method to actually run. All right, so let's go check that out now. All right, you can see that our tank is just sitting there now. 
Okay, so if I hit the W key, we're going to move forward. If I hit the S key, we're going to move back. Easy peasy. As simple as that. That's why I like using that move position method. Now, um, if you're just making simple controllers, that works. If you need something more realistic and you know complex, I definitely recommend adding forces and adding them all up and calculating the drag and you know whatever you need to do. This is just a great way to utilize the rigid body because I want to take advantage of the gravity component, right, and velocity components. I don't want to have to calculate that myself. So I get a lot of information by using the rigid body. I can treat it almost like a transform.translate by using this move position. All right, so let's move on to doing the rotation so we can close out this video and then move on to the next components of our tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the tank and it's basically the same setup. So what we need to do, instead of a vector for this, we need to create a quaternion. All right. And now quaternions aren't actually that, that scary uh, per se, um, but they are definitely confusing when you're first learning how to work with them. Okay. So I'm going to try to walk through this as best I can. So what I want to do is I want to say um, we're going to create a new quaternion, and this is going to be called our wanted rotation. Okay, and this is going to be equal to our transform dot rotation. Now this works because the transform dot rotation is work, is a quaternion. Okay, now instead of adding it like we do with a vector, we actually need to multiply it. All right, so this is how we can pull two quaternions together to create a new rotation value. Okay, so inside of parentheses, what I want to do is I want to put in my new rotation value. So I'm taking the current rotation, and I want to multiply on a new rotation. And to do that, what we can what we can do is we can take advantage of, and I don't actually need the parentheses there. We can take advantage of the quaternion dot Euler method. All right. So if we check this out, this returns a rotation that rotates z degrees around the z axis, x degrees around the x axis, and y degrees around the y axis. So it's got a couple of overrides too. So I'm going to provide it a vector and I like using this because I can give it a vector instead of having to do you know some crazy math so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say vector 3 dot up all right so that's the y here okay so that's the y position or direction excuse me all right so that's that vector 3 dot up and let's just do a quick experiment so um, I want to then multiply this by our tank rotation speed all right so let's just get it set up with that i'm not going to do any inputs or anything just yet so what we can do now is we can say rb dot move rotation all right and we we'll just give it that wanted rotation all right so let's take a look and see what happens and voila <laughs> we, we get a spinning tank all right and you can actually still push forward and it's going to slowly just start to try to get out of that but it's not going to it's rotating too fast all right it's all based off of our rotation speed here so we could slow it down and then provide it a little bit more all right so it's working all we need to do now is hook it up to our inputs okay so to do that again i'm just going to put some parentheses around this like so and we just need to multiply it by the input dot rotation input times our time dot delta time because we need to make sure that it's mapped to different CPU speeds and GPU speeds. Okay. All right. So that's hooked up to our inputs now. So let's go back. Let's hit play. And there we go. So now we're rotating. All right. We're going to need a little bit more. So I'm going to put our rotation speed up to about 50. There we go. All right. So at this point, it's probably a good idea to set our camera up. So I have the tank or the top down camera code here. So let's get that all set up. All right. So let's put in the in the main camera here. I'm just going to do the IP top down camera and our target is our tank there. And let's take our height way up and we'll take our distance way out like that. Let's hit play. And that's probably a little bit too, too much height. Let's do something like that. So again, 
Uh, if you want to know how all this works, all right, how to make the editor tools and stuff like that for this, I highly recommend watching the top-down camera course. All right, so there we go. Now we have a tank. And I want it to be a little bit faster, so let's put this up to like 60. There we go. So now we're rotating appropriately. All right, I'm going to turn off my gizmos in here. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now that I have some pretty good values, I'm going to hit this little cog wheel here, and I'm going to say copy component because I'm in play mode, and I want these values. All right, so I want to exit out of play mode, and then I'm going to then paste my values, and there we go. Save the scene, and we are good to go. So I'm going to leave you guys there, and in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on getting the turret to rotate. Okay, thanks so much.